The following video is produced by University of Vermont Extension. For more information, visit uvm.edu slash extension. Could you say and spell your name, please? Sylvia Sword, S-W-O-R-D. You're kidding, right? No, no, that's actually my name. <laughs> Sylvia Sword, not to put too fine a point on it, is a member of the University of Vermont's Fencing Club. Open to all UVM students, fencing is designated as a club sport at UVM and receives its funding from the Student Government Association. The club competes in regional and national tournaments. The roots of fencing stretch back into antiquity, the Renaissance, and 18th century France. While fencing is one of the four sports that have been featured in every modern Olympics, it has long been eclipsed by the matinee idols of yesterday and today. But what gets projected on the big screen isn't fencing. That's playing with swords. It's not like what you see in the movies. <laughs> I've studied some stage fighting, um, and it's and it's all, it's like, it's, it's like in the name, it's staged, and you, you work it out with your opponent in, in the scene, and none of it is natural. It looks organic when they do it on stage, but fencing is the real organic sword fighting. You need to push me back. The heart and soul of the UVM Fencing Club is found in Megan Lynn and Keegan Harris. Each is an accomplished fencer, quick to share their passion and sharp when it comes to the artistry and strategy of the sport they love. There are two major schools of thought in, in fencing. One is that victory is excellence, and then the other is that excellence is victory. And, um, and I'm of the latter school, um, so I lose a lot. <laughs> but, uh, but for me, that's, that, that is the secondary purpose. It's more about sort of an introspective um, thing. It, it's, it's a very philosophical pursuit, uh, and that often gets overlooked, but um, that's what I'm all about. I'm a very passive person, so it's kind of funny whenever I tell my friends that I'm a fencer, they're like, really? Because they have that vision of kind of the sword fighting and the bashing of swords, and so me being more of a calm, quiet person and seeing this more aggressive side to me and competitive spirit is interesting. I think that I'm kind of a technical person. I like that um, really technical aspect of the sport where you have to work on these little things in order to see improvement right down to the footwork and the way you hold your hand and everything so it's it's very technical as I said. Fencing is as much about footwork as it is about any other physical aspect of the sport. Being successful as a fencer means being good on one's feet. The very first step is footwork. You have to learn the on guard position and then an advance and a retreat and just really simple footwork. And it's just focusing on refining that until it's perfect because that is the foundation of the entire sport, the movement, because you need to be able to move towards someone to attack someone and move away to get out of someone's attack, reach out of someone's reach. That is the first thing that you teach. And then after that, it's letting people know that you're not just using that brute force to attack someone, it's, it's more ref refined and you need kind of a finesse and um, a, a grace to it in order to successfully pull off an attack. What we try to do at the club generally when we're bringing people up is to really reinforce that foundation so that when people do non-standard things, they do it by choice rather than by accident because that's how you get better on the strip is when you're when you're doing something that startles your opponent, not that your opponent can take advantage of. Yeah, my first tournament, I still remember being so nervous and just... Trying to explain the rules, nuances, and subtleties of any sport to the uninitiated right, is tricky. Fence. And fencing is no exception to the rule. I think what surprises people most when I uh, tell them about fencing is telling them about the rules, because there are a lot of rules in foil, not as many in epee, which is great, but um, I think that's, I think people don't think about that when you see two, two people hacking away at each other with swords, you don't think about the rules of the game. <laughs> Bouts are held on what fencers refer to as the strip. There are three different weapons in fencing, epee, foil, and saber. The weapons are wired as well as the jackets, and the scoring is decided by both man and machine. 
the electronic component of it is there to aid referees. And this has been a big problem since, you know, before there was electricity, it was a big problem because sometimes people would lie and say, no, 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 I didn't get hit. So electric equipment makes it a lot easier for a referee to see, yes, indeed, someone got hit, yes, indeed, someone didn't. When one fencer touches their opponent, a signal is sent to what's called the jury box. It's then up to the referee to make the final call and score the point. The first to five points wins the bout. In competitions, scores from individual bouts are tallied towards an overall team score. Call it a one for all, all for one kind of a thing. You can improve yourself and push yourself as hard as you want to and do as well as you want to. You put the commitment and the time in, um, but at the same time you also have that team atmosphere and you have um, your team cheering you on during bouts and you know we do cheers and we're all really excited for each other so um, it's it's individual and and you have that team aspect at the same time which is what I really love about it. Style and beauty are present in all sports from the arc of a ball to the movement of the human body itself. The poetry of fencing is found in its grace and its elegant violence. It really is beautiful to watch that technicality of it and the, the grace and it is sometimes likened to ballet and dance. Um, so it's, it's really wonderful to watch the, the movement. I'm an especially acrobatic fencer, although I'm, I'm ashamed to say that's because I'm not very good at the distance game. What happens is I get way too close and because I've spent years getting way too close, I've learned ways of, of working with it, but I think the picture of a, really, of a really good fencer is someone who never, there's sort of this, this poise and this sense of remove where they, as though they weren't even thinking about anything and they just, their hands and their legs just put them where they need to be in these subtle motions. That's beautiful. That's what I wish I could do. You make up your own style, I guess, and I, I love the grace of it. Personally, that's like always been more of my thing, not so much that I'm gonna cut you in half, but more like I'm gonna cut you in half in a way that's like really beautiful and graceful, you know? <laughs> what else is there to say to Sword's point other than touche? At the University of Vermont, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence.